We know of two ways to communicate data to a web server as part of an HTTP request. There's the get form where I get a page and then I pass in this list of parameters. So in this case, I'm communicating a piece of information to the server. That piece is a uh, key value. So the key is data and the value is one. The other way to do this is to do it in a post request. So I do a post request and in the body of the post request. So here the data is in the URL. Here the data is in the body of the post request. But fundamentally, I'm communicating the same thing to the server in both cases. So what is the difference between these two requests? And there is a quite important difference. Um, the difference has to do with the semantics of how the server handles this request and what happens when I make it. You might have noticed that your browser will warn you sometimes if you try to uh, reissue a certain type of web request. Those are post requests. So the browser will notice if you try to issue an identical post request to the server. And frequently a pop up will show up and says, you know, do you want to repeat this action? Something uh, might happen twice. And so the idea here is that in response to a GET request, the server is going to send you a page. Um, this is, a, this is a GET request. And the idea is that it sh in, on some level, nothing changes on the server as a result of this request. So if you hit this GET request 10 times in a row, you probably are going to get the same page back. Now, there might be elements of the page that are dynamically rendered that change a little bit, but this value isn't affecting anything on the server. It might be causing you to ser the server to send you a particular page, but there's no permanent change to the server state that occurs. So for example, um, if you th this might be used to retrieve an article on a news site. With the same parameters, I get the same article every time. OK, so nothing changes in response to a GET request. This is part of the, oh, there's my marker. <laughs> it's part of the uh, HTTP standard. On the other hand, POST is allowed to change things on the server and frequently used to change things on the server. So this is why POST requests are typically issued by forms. Um, when you click Submit on a form and you click Buy, when you click Rent, whatever it is, something changes on the server. So for example, if the post is being issued by a shopping site that I'm on, um, I might end up buying something. Um, and this is one of the reasons you get that warning about not issuing this request twice, because I may not want two different copies of the particular Hello Kitty book. I might just want one. Um, so you know, in other cases, uh, this might uh, create an account. That's another thing that I could do uh, with post. I might use this to create my GitHub account or an account on a site. And that's something that happens once. And once I have an account, I have an account, and then I could use it. Um, something else you might do is you know, uh, start the rental period for a movie. right? You run a movie online. This might start the rent, uh, rental period. And so what changes on the server at that point is that the server is now saying, OK, you have a couple days to watch this movie. The, there's a little piece of information that's changed. So forms and post requests are allowed to change things on the server. And so something about the world is different after you issue a post request. On the other hand, identical GET requests should produce identical data. And nothing has really changed about the world. So if if the request is going to change the world in some way, if it's going to produce, charge your credit card, create an account, cause something to start to happen, post is what's used for that. And that's the semantics of post. If nothing is going to change, I use the GET request instead. But both these requests can be used to communicate identical data to the server. The differences are just in terms of what happens in the world as a result.